Hello guys, this is Adriel, and welcome to my uh, first video in the introduction to 3D modeling using Blender. All right, so let's go over the Blender uh, application here. So this big window you see here with the grid in the background, that's your 3D viewport. This is what we'll do uh, most of the modeling here. There are other windows where we can do modeling, and they can be uh, selected using uh, these tabs up here. This is the these are the workspaces. So right now we're in the currently in the default layout workspace and go over to modeling. Looks just like this one, except we lose something down here. We'll go over that in a bit. Here's a sculpting uh, workspace. UV editing workspace. Texture paint workspace. Shading workspace. Animation workspace. Rendering workspace. Compositing workspace. And scripting workspace. All right, so for this class, mainly we'll use the uh, shading workspace right here, so we can get uh, good materials, uh, good surfaces for our objects, and texture paint. We can get a brick pattern in our objects and other things that are textured. Uh, UV editing, we'll use the UV editing workspace as well, so we can bring in images and wrap them onto our objects. For instance, you get a picture of a, of a celebrity or a person, and you can stretch it on the whole cube or just one face or just one part of the cube here. Uh, sculpting, uh, we're probably not gonna use. We'll see if we do. And a modeling, which is just like the layout one. Let me go here to layout. Here we go, there's layout. The only difference is that we don't have the timeline panel here. So go back to the layout workspace. Down here is the timeline panel. This is for animating. In the modeling class, we will not use the, um, the timeline panel. And up here in the upper right-hand corner, we have the outliner. And here our objects are inside the 3D viewport. See, there's our cube there. Uh, when things are selected in Blender, they have this yellow glow around them. As you can see here, it also has that yellow glow. So if I select our light source here, now that uh, has a yellow glow letting me know that it's selected. I can also select the camera from here, see, or any other object. I can select it from here, and I can select it from here as well. Uh, I went back to the cube. Uh, these things can be organized in layers similar to um, Photoshop or Illustrator, one of the other Adobe applications. They don't uh, necessarily have to overlap, but you can hide them. So I can close the eyeball here. Uh, just hit the cube. I can open it up. And there's filters here as well. And this is just to hide things from me, uh, like rendering and other effects as well. And I can create another collection. This is a collection here. I create another collection and have other objects in there. And I can hide that whole collection there, the whole box. Uh, we won't get too in depth into that. <clears throat> but down here we have the properties panel. So you can see there's multiple tabs here. Here's materials. This we'll use heavily. This is for, uh, for coloring our objects. So add color to there. Uh, this gives you uh, information about your object that's selected. This is to add uh, constraints. It's usually more for animating. Um, here's when I create certain effects, like uh, uh, related to physics, like cloth, a uh, smoke fluid. And this one was uh, particles this is for particles if you want to create something like hair or rain something that emits and these are the modifiers this will we, we will use heavily there's add modifiers you can uh, modify your mesh your objects you can generate things from your objects you can deform them or you can simulate them if you notice this here is similar to the physics <clears throat> there's a data about the cube here's the world it's like for the background the environment here as far as scene uh, this one for a view of the view layer. Here's the output. This is how you want to uh, export this object. This is, for instance, you want a picture. Right here it is PNG. You want a different format, it's there as well. And if you're animating, here's the different animation files you can use. And this is where we can um, export it to, uh, the quality, the resolution of your frame. And here's other objects for, um, here's rendering. And here are other tools as well for how to render your uh, your object maybe you want to get a good um, a good fog in there you want the fog to appear like fog you want water to appear like water those are effects you can add in here as well all right so we'll go over the 3d viewport here we'll do most of our modeling here's our object i'm going to select my object here my mesh this is a cube it's called a mesh cube similar to clay uh, clay modeling you can uh, change it uh, right now we are on the standard of viewport these are the viewports this is a solid viewport shader. Shows things in a, in a solid object. Also, if you hover over an object without clicking, just hover your mouse over it. It'll uh, 
give you a little text box here letting you know what it is and if there's a shortcut for it. Up next, we have um, the look dev here. This shows the effects of the light. Light and shadow. Also of color, we add a color there. And here is rendered. Render gives you a preview of the final product. For you to see the color on your object, if you add a material, if you add something to it to color it, you need to be either in the rendered or look dev shader. So you can see the effects of it. I can select the sun here. G for gram, move it over. See, now there's light over there as well. I'm going to right click to turn off the tool. There we go. To select an object, simply left click it. I can hit G for grab and move it. Then I can right click and turn off the tool. And it'll return things to how they were. G for grab, move the mouse. I haven't clicked yet. If I left click, it'll put it in the new position. Let me undo Control Z, universal undo. G for grab, move it around. Just right click and it puts it back to how it was before. <clears throat> All right, and then the first one we have here is wireframe. And that allows me to see through my mesh there of a wireframe of it. And if you're wondering how I'm doing this, I'm just pushing down the middle mouse button, uh, the third mouse button, the middle mouse button, the, the wheel, the spinner, whatever you want to call the thing in the middle. If you spin it, you zoom in and out. But if you hold it down, you can rotate your view around your object. See? Hold it down, move mouse, holding down the mouse, going up and down. Holding down the mouse, moving left and right. And I'm just holding down the middle mouse button there. All right. Uh, these viewport shaders, they're also available if you hit the Z key on your keyboard. Make sure your mouse inside the 3D view window. Hit the Z key. See, there's the same ones there. There's a wireframe, which is located up there. Your solid, which is right there. Then there's look def, look def, and then rendered, the last one there. I'm going to go back over to solid. I'm going to left click that one. Boom. And it'll bring up that menu. I just hit Z. I didn't hold down the Z key. I just tapped the Z key on the keyboard and it came back up. Also, as a best practice for your shortcuts to work, the hotkeys, we will extensively use hotkeys in the class. You have to have your mouse cursor inside the window that you want it to work in. For instance, here we're going to use it in 3D view window, 3D view port. I want to keep my mouse inside this window here. I don't want to use the shortcuts. If I move it over here, it's not going to work. So I hit Z here. There is my, um, my viewport shader pie menu. When we hit the Z key, I'm hitting the Z key, nothing's happening. Z key down here, nothing's happening. Uh, the timeline panel, there are, uh, the tool can be used, the tools can be used similarly as they are there. So hit G for grab, I can move it there. Hit G for grab here. Let's see. Nope, oh, let's see, what if I hit, oh, I can't grab the cursor. I have to add a, a keyframe in there. All right, so you can change the size of your panels. Over, over the dividing point between the panels, get a double-sided arrow, hold down the left mouse button, and then drag. You want to get a double-sided arrow, you can drag to make panels wider or smaller. Depending on your project, you may want a, a bigger window, you might want to expand the other ones. Sometimes you make these really small, it's kind of hard to read the stuff in the menu. So you want to make them bigger so you can read the, the information that's in there. All right, when you're working in 3D space, we use Cartesian coordinates. So as you can see, here's a green line. This is the Y axis. This is forward back. See, it also tells me right here, I have a little key. I haven't clicked on those yet. So forward back is Y, the green line. Uh, left and right, that's the X axis. Left and right, X axis, red line. Then up and down is the Z axis, the blue line. It's not uh, visible in this view. We have to activate a setting so we can see it. Uh, but if I want to make it uh, visible to me, I can go ahead one on the number pad in front of you. Also, when using uh, Blender, make sure I have the number lock activated on your number pad. One for front view. There we go. Looking at my cube from the front. Here's my blue line for up and down. And here's my red line for left and right. So I'm looking at it from the front. So I cannot see the green line because I'm looking at it from the green line. It's forward back. See, there it is right there. The Y axis. Let's say I want to go uh, for right view. I can hit three on the number pad for right view. Or I can click on this X right here and it gives me the right view. See, there it is. There it is. And I can see the green line because I'm looking at it from the right. Looking at it down the x-axis, left and right. I can see it from the top as well. That's going to be 7 on the notepad, 7 for top view. There we go. See, there's a Z right there letting me know what view I'm looking at it from. Looking, now I'm looking at it from the top. So I can see the x-axis here goes left and right. And the y-axis goes front and back here. All right. Hold on the mouse button. Middle mouse button and try to rotate my view back how I had it. There we go. Uh, currently, we are in object mode. Object mode is to do uh, things of the greater scene. 
of the bigger world, of the bigger environment. For instance, I can select the camera here, the light, the cube, make changes to all this, move it around. If I want to do things in detail, I can go over to edit mode. I cannot take the camera or the light into edit mode, but I can take mesh into edit mode. For instance, if I want to model, I can model this. I cannot model those, so I can change the uh, parameters on them, the settings, but I can definitely uh, model the cube here. So I'm going to go over here to the upper left-hand corner. It says object mode. I'm going to click in there. See a little drop-down menu, select edit mode. Also, the shortcut for accessing edit mode, it's a tab key on the keyboard, upper left-hand corner of your keyboard, hit tab, and went back to object mode, tab again, and then back to edit mode. It just toggles between object mode and edit mode. That's just the tab key there, at the upper left-hand corner of your keyboard. There we go. Now that I'm in edit mode, I can see the basic building blocks here of my mesh. The most basic unit is a unit is a vertices, is a vertex. That's one of these dots right here. Vertex is a singular term. Plural is, is a plural term. Sorry, the plural term is vertices. Vertex is the uh, singular term. So you can see here, we have a little blue box here highlighted. That's letting me know I have vertex selection activated. I can click there. There's one vertex there. There's another vertex. There's another one. Let's say I want to select this whole edge here. I can select one vertex on one end. Hold on the shift key to multi-select. And then left click the next one over. And there you go. So I left click the first one. And then the second selection, I hold on the shift key first, and then left click it. See? I got that whole edge selected, and those two vertices there. I can also just jump over to edge selection. There we go. And I can just select the edge here. This will be like the uh, like the wire of your object. And then let's say I want to select this whole face. I can either select the four vertices around it or the four edges. I can hold on the shift key and multi-select these other edges there. Oh, now the whole face there is selected. All right, I can go here to face selection. And just select the whole face by left clicking it. And notice we had gone up here. So now I cannot select an individual edge or individual vertices. I select entire faces because I'm in face selection. Same thing with edge selection. I cannot select an individual vertices, just an edge. I'm going to go back down to vertex here. All right, select this one vertex here. In order for you to have an edge, at least when it comes to good modeling, you need to have a vertex on each end of the, of the edge. So uh, for an edge to exist, it needs to be supported by two vertices on each end. For a face to exist, it's going to need to be supported by vertices and edges. So we have edges there. You have four edges. And each, and each of those edges is supported by vertices on each end. As you can see here, a vertex can support multiple edges. And here we have our face. So if I delete this vertex here, I will lose these edges here because there's nothing there to support those edges. They don't have a vertex on each end. There's going to be a vertex there still, but there will be nothing to support this edge because this one here will disappear. And then these faces here will also collapse. This face, that face, that face, because there's no edges or vertices there to support those. So I'm going to delete this one here. I just left-click it to select it. And to delete, to delete is the X key. X for delete, or there's a delete key on your keyboard as well. I get at this pop-up menu here for deleting options. And I don't want to only delete vertices there, so I'm going to delete that vertex there. There we go. So I just deleted the uh, that corner there of my box of my cube, and now I lost the uh, the other faces there that were that were uh, being held up by the edges there, and those edges were gone because they were, they were being held up by that one vertex there. I can uh, recreate faces or edges. See, I'm gonna select this vertex there. Hold on the shift key, select the other one there, make a triangular face there. Let's see. All right. So I got these two selected. I clicked on one, held on the left mouse button, and clicked on the other one. And now I'm going to fill this in with an edge. I'm going to hit F, F for fill. There you go, I filled it in. Now let's see, I want a face in here, because there's still no face in there. Just, uh, just an edge there, hanging in space. I'm going to hold on the shift key, select this one here, because these are already selected. Now I have all three selected. F for fill. There we go. I just filled in that side right there. And to build a face... You need a minimum of three vertices. I don't need four vertices. As you can see here, I have three vertices and three edges. I don't need four. You know, all you need is three, and you have yourself a, and you have yourself a face. If you have only two vertices, you won't get a face. That's, that's not enough. You need at least three vertices and three edges to build up a face. So I'm just going to undo all that. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Control Z. There we go. There is a limit to how many times you can undo. I'm not sure what the uh, what the limit is. 
but there, there is a limit to how many times you can go back. Uh, to redo, let's say you went too far back on the Control-Z, that would be Control-Shift-Z to give you a redo. Okay, there we go. Back to object mode. All right, hit the tab key, I went back to object mode. Over here we have the lamp. And I've got my lamp. Uh, let's say I want to change the type of lamp. Right now it's a point light. A point light has a property similar to uh, a candle or a light bulb. They don't uh, cover a wide range of uh, area to light up. So it is limited, but you can still see the light from a distance. So let me go over to look dev right here, or let's go to render, I like rendered. Let's go to rendered. Now I'm going to go over here to lamp data. So notice out here I have this light bulb icon there. That's only available if I have a lamp selected. If I select a different object, then it'll be uh, something representing that object. So I'm going to select mesh here, and I'll get the symbol for mesh. That's the symbol for mesh. I'm going to go over to the camera, and I'll get a symbol for the camera. Okay, there it is. I'm going to select the lamp there. I'll click the lamp. All right, so here's lamp data. I can change this to a sun. There we go, really bright, as you can see there. Very intense. A spotlight. There we go. Similar to the, uh, the Batman symbol. Or um, one of those spotlights you see at the comic stand-up shows. Uh, area lamp. There you go. And an area lamp that's similar to light coming from a TV screen, a tablet, a monitor, a phone. So just uh, light. It's contained and it doesn't cover a wide range. And then all of these have settings here that you can change. Let me go over to sun. Here's a strength. I can uh, make this weaker. Just hold on the left mouse button and drag. Or I can type something in there. Let me go over with 20. There we go. Let me try five. There you go, five. So I went from 1,000 to five. Let me try three. There we go. Now it doesn't look as intense. Bring it back to 1,000. One, one, two, three. There we go. Let's see what happens if I try 50,000. One, two, three. It doesn't seem to be much brighter. I guess some of it's creeping off to the side there. Ten. One, two, one thousand. There we go. And I'm going to go over to the uh, camera here. There we go. I have my camera selected. Oh, wait. Let's go back to point light. There we go. Go back over to camera there. Here I can change the view of the camera. But um, let me see what the camera sees. So I'm going to hit zero on the number pen. Boom. That's camera view right there. Perspective view. Photographic view. And panoramic view. For this class, mainly we'll say in the uh, default setting perspective view. Uh, focal length. It's kind of like a zoom. I'm going to just leave that one at the default setting of 50. There we go. Uh, Shift X and Y. This is so you can uh, go up and down. So the X is going to go left. Sorry. X is for left and right. Y is for up and down. You can hold the left mouse button. And it's just sliding over to the left or to the right. Almost as if uh, the camera was on a rail. Zero. And this one just slide up and down. There we go. And this one's more like a rotation. Enter. Uh, clip start and end. That's how far you can see. It's kind of like your field of view. We start at point 0.1 blender units. So if something gets really close, it eventually gets to the point where you can't really see it anymore. And that's how far you can see. If uh, you got multiple objects, you got a large scene going on there, you can't see it in the camera, you know it's there somewhere, then you just have to increase this number there. Uh, all this stuff on the outside here, that is the uh, behind the scenes. What I want, uh, what I'm concerned about is what's inside this right here. This is my camera frame. This is what will be captured in my fun, final render. So if I were to uh, make this into a picture, it'd be whatever is inside this frame right here. I can still manipulate my objects from here. See, I can left click on my camera there. Sorry, left click on my mesh there. If you grab, I can move it around. I can also select my camera from this view. I can just left click here on the uh, frame. There we go, select it. And I can also select it there. I'll watch out for this blue highlight. That doesn't mean that object is selected. The yellow, that lets you know what object is selected. See, there's a cube, light, back to camera. And I can also manipulate my camera from this UG for gram, move it around. See? Right click to put it back. Seven for top view, seven on the number pad. Right there, I have my camera selected. I get a G for grab, pull it back. Left click there. Zero for camera view. Oh, so I zoomed out, but camera's pointed down. G for grab, go up. And there we go, see? Back in business. <clears throat> All right, here's some, uh, here's the layout of the number pad. So one is for front view, 
Two, you can actually uh, rotate down. Let me go back over here. One for front, one for front view. I'll select the cube here. Number two, you rotate around my object. Eight, rotate the other direction. Let me go back to solid. There we go. Into the solid viewport shader right there. You can also hit the Z key, and select it from right there. Uh, four and six, or we'll rotate left and right. So hold on the four. Tap the six, or you can also hold it down. Move them upside down. One in front of you. There we go. You can also zoom in and out by using the plus or minus sign on the number pad. Just like the uh, spinner on your mouse button, on your mouse, the third mouse button, the middle mouse button. I remember zero's camera view. Uh, if you want to zoom and center in an object, just the decimal key on the number pad. It's between zero and enter. It'll zoom and center it. See? Sometimes if you too zoomed in, hit decimal on the number pad, it'll zoom out. So it'll either zoom in or, or zoom or, or zoom out. All right, I can pan left and right. Let's say I want to move this way, but not uh, not rotate my view. Just move over to the left a little bit. I'm gonna hold on the shift key, hold on the middle mouse button, and then drag over to the right. See? Or to the left, or up, or down. So I'm holding on shift, holding on the middle mouse button, and then while I'm doing that, I'm moving my mouse. If I let go, and I'll just hold on the middle mouse button, then I can rotate my view around the object. So my object is actually not moving. Nothing here is moving. What's actually moving is me, just my view of it. That's what's changing. Everything's still in the same place. You can see here, here's the origin, where all the axes is meet. That's a zero. All right. Here's some tips. Always be aware of the location of your mouse cursor. Remember, like I mentioned before, keep your mouse inside the 3D viewport window or in whatever window you're trying to use your shortcuts in. If you want to keep it in here. So one example of uh, using it in different windows will be over here in, uh, let's see, UV editing. So I can make changes here. And then later when I unwrap something, I can make changes here by having the mouse in here and using the shortcuts there or using the shortcuts there. So I have to be aware if my mouse is here or there, depending on what I want to change. Back to layout. Your hockey shortcuts will only work inside the panel that your cursor is located in, as I just mentioned. Most editing is done in the 3D viewport window. So if your hotkey shortcut is not working, then move your mouse inside of it. All right, so mouse over here, shortcut not working. Let's put it in there. Only model one of the contextual views from the number pad. Always have a number lock uh, activated and use a number pad to change your contextual view. So you always want to be in, in one for front view. So here I am, one for front view. Three for right view, seven for top view. If you want to be one of these views when you're modeling, I'm going to go over to edit mode. There we go. So by editing one of these views, I restrict my selection here. See, I can just select that on the front. I'll select the back. If I want to select the back and Z for wireframe, select that, grab all of that. This is a drag select. Hold on the left mouse button and drag across. Shift Z, back to solid. Tab key back to object mode. So by working in one of the views, one for front view, three for right view, any of those views, you restrict only working in two dimensions. You don't have to worry about the third dimension. It is challenging to work in three dimensions, uh, working in one of these views. Uh, you might think something here is straight, and it might not. It might be at an angle. Might be might meet at a focal point somewhere. All right. Use your mouse to change the user view is not accurate. So if you're using your mouse to try to do this, like, oh, let me go back to front view. There I am in front of you. You don't want to do that, you know? You don't want to try to do that to go over here to right view or front view. You want to hit the number pad key. There you go, three for right view. Not trying to adjust it with your mouse. You can select the lost objects from the outliner, top right panel. They hit the decimal key on, in the number pad to zoom and center it. So let's say I uh, lose my cube out there somewhere. Bye bye, cube is gone. I can select it here. There you go. Move the mouse back over here, decimal key on the number pad. Boom, zoom and center. It's back in business. Uh, know the difference between object mode and edit mode. So always be aware if you're in object mode or edit mode. You can look up there, see if you're in object mode or edit mode. You can also just hit the tab key. Uh, with some experience, you'll be familiar with, um, by just looking at the mesh, if you're in object mode or edit mode. Uh, object mode allows for limited editing and selection of separate objects. Edit mode allows for additional detailed edit editing and selection of the vertices, edges, and faces. There's lots of free information on how to use Blender on YouTube and other sites. Go ahead and check them out. Uh, there are also online communities for Blender artists. So if you have Facebook, there's a bunch of Blender Facebook groups. And I'm sure there's forums and blogs out there. Don't be afraid to experiment. Control-Z will undo your errors. All right. Control-Z. 
Oh, that was just a selection. Let me see. Let me do this. Leave it there. Do that. Make it look all weird. All right. So my cube doesn't look like cube anymore. And just Control Z. There we go. Control Z. Control Z. Boom. Computer software is uh, very forgiving. Control Z will undo. Uh, so that's it for uh, for this lesson. More of a tutorial, just overview, get you familiar with the workspace, and we'll make uh, an ASIC pyramid next time. Thank you for watching. Take care.